When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Some psych psychologists suggest that we should look at fiction as a powerful, ancient, virtual reality simulator that simulates the big dilemmas of human life. So you turn on the TV, you open a novel, and whoosh, you're teleported into this other world. If a story is good, you sink into a quasi-hypnotic trance. It's an authentically altered state of consciousness where you don't just sympathize with those characters, you strongly empathize with them. You feel their fear, their anger, their desire. Your brain, they can look at it in the fMRI scanner, your brain is lighting up like what is happening to the characters is actually happening to you. In other words, the research seems to show that working our way through these fictional social problems, these fictional social dilemmas, actually preps us to deal with the real thing. That was Jonathan Gottschall, author of The Storytelling Animal, and he makes a good point. Even more so than novels, movies, or television, video games can be a powerful tool not only to experience a story, but to use your characters and their actions to learn a bit more about yourself. To quote Gottschall from his book, the novelist and critic Tom Bissell notes in his book, Extra Lives, we are living through the birth of a new form of storytelling where the conventions are still being discovered and refined. So let's take a look at just how this character identity thing works and use it to discover and refine some conventions of our own. On the most basic level, there's character appearance. Seems pretty basic, right? Not quite. Just like real life, a character's outward appearance can speak volumes about the kind of person the player is themselves. Let's keep up appearances. Will you make a character that looks like you? Someone you want to be? Someone you never thought about being before? This can vary from game to game, of course. With a game like The Sims, for example, I often make characters that look like myself, intentionally or otherwise. Seeing a little cartoon version of yourself mingling with people, getting a job, a nice house, etc. can be pretty rewarding, but it also says a lot about the kind of things I wish I could do. Wouldn't it be nice to have a huge house, a job you excel at? Making these things happen to someone like you helps you live vicariously through them, if only for a moment. Not that things can't go wrong, of course. But how about a fantasy epic like Dragon Age? My latest protagonist doesn't look a thing like me, but says a lot about me regardless. He's a dark-skinned dwarf, an underdog in every sense of the word. Appearances can be even more important, however, when you consider representation. How many fat superheroes can you name? I can only name one, my Saints Row 4 character. How many Indian fantasy characters? Or female space opera heroes? It's empowering to play these kinds of characters as they're the heroes or anti-heroes of your own story, one that you experience and shape for yourself, and can really only find in a personalized experience. Once a character's appearance is taken care of, their role in the story must be determined as well. How you choose to play the character, engage in the story, says a lot about you. In Mass Effect, will you be a ruthless soldier, patience long gone, temper shot? In The Sims, what career will you pursue? Will you choose to be a human noble in Dragon Age or an elven peasant? All of these things may seem superficial, but speak a lot to what your goals, biases, and motivations truly are and will affect how other characters, as well as the game world, will treat your character in the story. Every great war has its heroes. I'm just curious what kind you'll be. Finally, and arguably most importantly, is the way in which you construct your character's identity. This is the big part. Didn't we already talk about that though? Well, sort of, but that's not what I meant. I mean, the way you yourself actually make the character a character. 
In other words, the way you talk to other characters in the game, the decisions you make, the effects they have. Like Gottschall said earlier, we can use fiction to practice for the real thing. So what would you do as your character? When a character says something nice, mean, affectionate to you, and you're given the freedom to answer, how will you respond? Games like Mass Effect or Dragon Age achieve this freedom to answer through a dialogue wheel. The way these wheels work in Mass Effect is the top option is usually the more kind-hearted and considerate, Paragon. And the bottom option is usually more heartless and aggressive, Renegade. While the middle option is generally neutral. Options on the left are for asking questions to learn more about the situation. Options on the right advance the conversation further. It's fairly simple. Dragon Age works much the same way, only not usually as strict. It's not as easy to find out. There aren't set alignments in Dragon Age, but characters around will show their approval or disapproval for your actions. If you displease them too much, they might leave the game entirely just out of spite. He's the real enemy, but you! Watching you spread across Thedas like some cancerous growth sickens me. This real system may also come into play to make major decisions. Here we see a scene from Dragon Age, in which I can either prevent the Empress of the most powerful and wealthy nation of the game from being assassinated, or let her die and then intervene, taking the power left by her demise by installing a ruler of my own. I chose to intervene, publicly exposing the assassin after hunting for clues that led to the killer's identity. Inquisitor. The eyes of every noble in the Empire are upon us, Your Grace. Remember to smile. This is your party. You wouldn't want them to think you had lost control. Who would not be delighted to speak with you, Inquisitor? I seem to recall you saying, all I needed was to keep you out of the ballroom long enough to strike. When your archers failed to kill me in the garden, I feared you wouldn't save me this last dance. Because I shamed her at court, instead of openly confronting her, I can now skip a long and arduous boss battle, and I have more options available to me. What I did, what I said, how I said it, all mattered in the outcome of the game, and that says something about me as a person. I found it more satisfying to publicly humiliate the killer than to kill her myself, and chose not to execute her when she was left vulnerable. These kinds of decisions are present in far too many games that I can list. But the general idea is that you can make choices that not only affect the game's story, but you as well. Would I show a mercy to an assassin in real life? Well, that will probably never come up. But how about the death penalty? That's a real issue. Have video games impacted my stance on that? I've never been given the power of life or death over a criminal before. But in video games, I have. It's practicing for the real thing. In other mediums, everyone is watching or reading the same thing. In the Iliad, for example, Achilles always kills Hector and drags his body around. It's supposed to make you feel bad, like Achilles is in a dark place. But what if that were a video game? What if you had a choice? What if a friend of yours played an Iliad video game and delighted in dragging Hector's mangled corpse behind his chariot? That would say quite a bit about your friend, because they're the ones doing it for their own reasons. Also, get less scary friends. Ah, uh, listen to me talk. Your time is valuable and I've wasted enough of it. So anyways, my point in describing all this is to emphasize how all the different options and ways to play these games can be used as a generative tool to discover more about yourself. Playing Skyrim, for instance, and joining the Thieves Guild is different than being a hero. Playing Mass Effect as a woman with a kind heart will be different than playing an aggressive guy who kicks people out windows for fun. What you choose to do in these games, who you choose to be, says quite a bit about who you are in real life. I've got nothing more to say to you. How about goodbye? <laughs>